Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the wheat, the structure and the composition of the wheat. Well, wheat is the second most largest produce crop in the entire world. Almost 75% of the wheat is made, is made up of the starch and it's a rich energy source. We consume it daily either in the form of roti or chapati, pizza, whatever the form may be, it's all made up of the wheat. Well, coming to the details, wheat belongs to a genus called Triticum of the grass family Gramini. Well, we all know that the cereals are uh, uh, cereals come from the grass plants. Even wheat is a cereal, so it it, it comes from a grass plant, grass family called Gramini. There are more than thirty thousand species of wheat. It is cultivated from the prehistoric times around five thousand BC. So, an ideal wheat grain has a length of eight millimeters and it weighs around thirty five mg milligrams. So it, it is grown in almost all parts of the world except the Antarctica. So parts of the kernel, big grain or the kernel can be divided into three distinct morphological parts. Here you can um, see the term kernel, it is nothing but the wheat grain. There is no need to buy hard this word. You can use either of the words. You can use the kernel instead of wheat grain or wheat grain instead of the kernel. So coming to the parts of the wheat kernel, there are three basic parts. First part is the bran, the outer covering. Second is the endosperm, the storage of starch, and the germ or the germ cell it is also called embryo. This is the place where life starts from. Here you can see the diagram. The upper covering it's called uh, the bran. It has layers like pericarp, epicarp, seed coat or testa, nuclear tissue. It has the hull. It has apex at the top. Second is the endosperm. It is cube-like structure. Most of the cells are cube-like structure. How cube structure? And the third one is the germ cell. It is down over here. It has a part called scutellum, which acts as a transporter of the energy or the starch from the endosperm to the germ cell when it is germinating. So detailed structure, pericard, it's around 5% of the total wheat grain. Entire seed is surrounded by the pericarp, which is composed of several layers. The outer pericarp is B-swing or the epidermis. So it is Cube like um, it, these are tube like structure actually. So, the part uh, the cells of pericarp are tube structure. Here, you can see the tube like cells. Second, it's a seed coat. This layer contains pigments. It's the second layer. This layer is beneath the pericarp and it is followed by the alveolar layer. Alveolar layer is the outermost layer of the endosperm. So when a um, wheat kernel is dehulled, uh, the very first layer uh, will be uh, left by the dehulling process is the alveolar layer because it's the very first layer of the endosperm. So it's the outermost layer of the endosperm. It is generally single thick walled cubical cells and completely covers both starchy endosperm and the germ. Alveolar cells have large nucleus and a large number of granules. The cells contain 20% of protein and 10% of sugar. It also has oil, mineral matters. It has phosphorus. It has niacin. It is very rich in the vitamin B complex. It has niacin in it. It has thiamine in it. It has riboflavin in it. Thiamine is the vitamin B1. Riboflavin is the B2. Niacin is vitamin B6, I guess. So the next part is the germ or the embryo. It has two parts, embryonic axis and the scutellum. Scutellum acts as the runway or the highway, uh, which allows uh, the 
energy or the starch pass through the pass through it and it, uh, the energy enters into the germ cell while the germinating this is the endosperm which nourishes the germ cell while the um, germination process is going on so embryonic axis is where rudimentary roots and shoots originate scutellum functions as a storage organ during germination of seeds scutellum mobilizes the stored reserve, food reserves in the endosperm to the embryo here is the nutrition content the protein is 25 percent sugar 18 percent oil both in embryonic and scutellum it's 16 and 32 percent ash content is 5 percent and vitamin e is 500 ppm ppm is the parts per million I have to buy heart all these things or else you, um, you can remember these things these are very um, very very important in the examination point of view endosperm see basically it has three parts in it so it did three types of cells in it starchy endosperm excluding the alluron layer is composed of three layers of cell varying in size shape and location within the kernel so there is no need to buy hard all these things what you have to remember is there are three type three layers it has peripheral cells prismatic cells and the central cells so peripheral cells are the outermost ones from the first row of cell inside the alluron layer prismatic cells are, cells are present inside the peripheral cells and central cells are present inside the prismatic cells that's it there is a necessity for increase of wheat production in india still we are not up to the mark hope you all do that thank you